Good evening, I'm Jeff Glow reporting tonight from Washington, D.C., and we're going to begin not far away in Virginia. First, it was the governor, then the lieutenant governor, now the state attorney general, the top three leaders in the state, all Democrats, all facing deep controversy. The latest is Attorney General Mark Herring, who admitted today that he once wore blackface at a college party. Ed O'Keefe has more on the chaos in the Commonwealth. I'm going back to my office. Virginia Democratic lawmakers were in no mood to discuss the latest scandal to rock Richmond. Attorney General Mark Herring admitting that he also once dressed in blackface. As an undergraduate in 1980, he said in a statement he and friends went to a party as rappers. We dressed up and put on wigs and brown makeup. He added, I have a glaring example from my past that I have thought about with deep regret in the many years since. When word reached the state house, there were audible gasps and expletives from staffers. Some lawmakers hung their heads in disbelief. And this from the head of the Virginia Legislative Black Caucus, Lamont Bagby. Like I said, we're not praying enough. The scandal rocketed all the way up to Washington. I'm shocked and incredibly disappointed. Um, this has been an awful week for Virginia. Today's bombshell comes just days after Herring called for Governor Ralph Northam to resign over a racist photo, including a man in blackface, that was discovered on his medical school yearbook page. I am not either of the people in that photo. After that news conference, Herring had said it is no longer possible for the governor to lead Virginia. Northam remains out of sight as he contemplates his political future. He's meeting with black leaders and may hire a private investigator to prove it's not him in the photo. Then there's Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax, who's facing an allegation of sexual assault during the Democratic National Convention in 2004. Today, his accuser, Vanessa Tyson, put out a lengthy statement saying she's a Democrat and is sharing her story with tremendous anguish. She says she had gone to Fairfax's hotel room to retrieve documents and that after consensual kissing, Mr. Fairfax forced me to perform oral sex on him. Fairfax has repeatedly denied the allegation and responded today, saying, reading Dr. Tyson's account is painful. I have never done anything like what she suggests. As all three men consider their next steps, Virginia's line of succession states that if Northam steps down, Fairfax would take over, then Herring. And next in line, Republican Kirk Cox, Speaker of the House, where the GOP has a one-seat majority. In a twist worthy of the movies, the race for that one seat ended in a tie. David Yancey. And was decided when the name of the Republican winner was pulled out of a ceramic bowl. Ed, you've been covering this story since just after it broke. What, what happens next here? Good question, Jeff. We're here outside the attorney general's office tonight waiting to see if he has anything more to say. Democrats across the state are especially concerned that this trio of scandals could spoil their chances of retaking control of the state legislature later this year. The Republican Speaker Kirk Cox that we mentioned issued a statement a little while ago urging Virginians to keep calm. Alluding to the Commonwealth's 400th anniversary this year, he said in part, we have weathered the storms of four centuries and will weather this one as well. Jeff. Ed O'Keefe in Richmond, Ed, thank you very much.